If you're like most players, early game might not be one of your strong suits. There are simply so many factors that come into play, and it's just hard to have a consistent strategy that will always result in you surviving. You know, from the amount of players around you, to the loot you're gonna get, to your landing spot, it's just all so complex. What's going on guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only I'm back, Keith Allen. Make sure to connect with me on my new Insta. That is right, your motivation guy. Once again, follow me at your motivation guy. I wanna inspire you guys, man, to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. Are you ready for that? Are you ready to be great? Let's do it together. Today, we're gonna tell you everything that you need to know to dominate the early game every single time. But before we start this video, if you guys are looking to get better at this game, click the link below to go to ProGuys.com where you can play with the best players in the world. Sign up for our membership at ProGuys and you're going to get a ton of incredible content from the best pro players like Benji and Mongo and more World Cup champions coming out soon. If you want to compete in Fortnite, you got to check out ProGuys.com. Finally, before we get into this thing, let's do the question of the day, all right? Today's question is, what is your preferred drop spot and why do you like landing there? You know, I know a lot of people that like steamy stacks, but you know, I like steamy a lot because it has over 20 chests and has giant wind tunnels for mobility. So I'm looking forward to reading your comments. All right, guys, without further ado, let's go over a few general tips to control the early game. Then we're going to analyze a few pros and just see what we can take away from their gameplay. So it's time to sit back, relax, and get my favorite candy that we all love these days. It's that bunch of crunch. You know you do. Let's get it. If you've ever watched a pro play in the early game, you're going to notice that they always have more materials than their opponents. Having a solid material count at the start of the game is absolutely crucial as box fights are extremely common. And having the extra cover and ability to move around is going to prove super helpful in the early game. This is even more true, my friends, when your opponent has a good AR or an SMG and tries to pressure you using it. If you run out of materials, you can't do anything. I can't tell you how many times this mistake has cost me a game. <laughs> I'm rather embarrassed. I'm not even going to talk about it. So do me a favor and always farm up all spawn. The best way to get materials is to farm every piece of furniture, since almost all of them take one hit and give you five to eight materials. Assuming the average is six, breaking 20 pieces of furniture is gonna get you 120 extra material. Also, landing at a building near trees or stones is very beneficial, since you can get an easy source of materials right at the start. Finally, if you ever find a chest or an ammo crate, consider destroying the floor or furniture item below it instead of just opening it normally. This can easily get you 12 to 15 material with only a few seconds of work. Making this a habit will consistently increase your early game material count. You can thank me later for that. I love you. Looting is one of the most obvious things to do in early game, all right? If you don't loot well enough, you're not gonna last long enough against an opponent who has better stuff. That's just common sense. Loot pathing is developing a specific path to follow in order to secure more loot and more materials. Almost every single pro has a loot path that they follow almost every single game to ensure they're gonna get better loot than their opponents. So, one of the best tools to develop a loot path is the website lootlake.info. If you can name it, this website has it. From chest spawns to floor loot, ammo crates, boats, zip lines, campfires, slurp bins, and so much more, this website is just an incredible tool to use when trying to find or learn anything about the map. We recommend looking around on the POI you like landing at and looking for the area with the most dense counts of floor loot and chest spawns, okay? Landing at Steamy Stacks, the most dense loot area, is the far west building with 20 floor loot spawns and four chests and a small building. Once you've figured out where the most dense area is, head into a playground and decide on your favorite route through. Try to find a short, efficient route with the good loot and materials. You know, for a lot of people, they decide to land on the crates just north of the building, then head into the building to loot. This is because these crates have good metal, two floor loot spawns, and a guaranteed chest. You know, developing a good loot path is absolutely crucial, guys, to survive in the early game especially, and can heavily improve your chances of getting good loot, materials, and winning your early game fights. If you ever get 50-50 for a chest off spawn, remember that the chest loot will always come out of the right side of the chest. Being on the right side and spamming your button will heavily increase your chances of getting the weapon first. The final tip for early game is to be the aggressor, man, not the aggressive. Yeah, that's a word. It is a word, I'm, I'm not lying. Okay, fine, it's not, whatever. Anyway, it's important to be the one in control during your fights, all right? Especially when your opponent is likely not to have a lot of heals and materials. Never put yourself on the defensive end of the fight, and that puts you in a vulnerable position. 
Instead, this is what you guys want to do. You want to be the one putting the pressure on and pushing your opponent. When doing this, it is so crucial to get the first shots off on your opponent as this is almost going to guarantee results in them boxing up or playing from low ground. And from this point in the fight, you know you can start to attack from different angles and keep putting pressure on your opponents to get shots in. If you follow this rule, guys, of always being the aggressor in the early game fights, you can ensure yourself to come out more alive than ever. Okay, so now that we've gone over a few general tips to win the early game, let's dive in a bit deeper and look at a few pros in early game to see what they do and, you know, maybe get a better idea of how to consistently win the early game, right? Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get this started. The first clip that we're going to be looking at is an early game from Mongrel. All right, so first and foremost, you know, we can see that he messes up his drop and has to land early, resulting in a much less loot. This shows why it's so important, man, to master your drop and loot path, so this doesn't happen to you. However, you know, it's not all too bad because, you know, he manages to grab some loot where nobody landed, and he gets to full shield with an AR, shotgun, and an SMG. <laughs> Thank goodness. Mongo spots a player grabbing some shield barrels, uh-oh, but ultimately decides to disengage and he looks for another fight. And he'd be fighting from a super weird angle on top of that. Remember guys, it is never bad to disengage and wait for later if you're in a bad position, okay? Even Mongrel, one of the most mechanically gifted players in the entire world, decides to go away from a fight that he doesn't like. A bit later, after a bit of farming, Mongrel hears a player farming slurp barrels. He realizes the player is behind a wall and shoots an RPG near him, scoring an easy 100 damage. Mongrel immediately decides to push in and finish the kill. With his massive health advantage, he chases the player for a bit until the player runs out of materials, but unfortunately, the kill gets stolen. And now a new challenger appears. Instead of just fighting this player and risking his game, he decides to disengage and move to the safe zone. Even though this early game didn't include any kills or any mini, you know, insane plays, you know, there are still a few things that we could take away from this. First, it is so important to master where to open your glider so you don't have a drop that's too early or too late, ensuring that you're going to get full access to your loot route and the best loot possible. Second, never be afraid, guys, to disengage from a fight in early game. If you don't have enough loot, materials, shield, or even just want to take the fight, we can see that Mongo right here decided not to take a fight simply because it was just a weird angle and it would have just took too long. Third, if you hit a player for a lot of damage, it's a good idea to take chase, but never be afraid to let them go if it's taking too long or the kill gets stolen. Finally, keep an eye on this storm in the early game. You know, sometimes you might get caught up in a fight and not realize it's on your back. We can see that towards the end of the clip, Mongo was matched up against a player that he could have probably beat. You know, I mean, come on, it's Mongo. However, he knew the storm was about to come in and he didn't have any white heels. So he ultimately decided to head into safety and continue his battles later. All right, guys, so next up is an early game from Booga, who recently started landing at the bridge near Pleasant Park. After looking around, he realizes he's only contested by one player who lands on the other side. Booga decides to land at the west side due to the slurp truck, which grants maximum shield. However, this does come at a cost as the other side is better loot. Booga decides to go toward the bus, which has floor loot and a chest spawn and to rotate to the slurp truck for maximum shield. Off spawn, he gets six mini shields, an SMG, a bolt sniper, good materials, and max shield. Things are really starting to look up. All right, so remember what we said about grabbing more materials than your opponent? Well, Booga starts with over 300 materials just like that. Now, remember what we said about having a consistent loot route? <laughs> Don't worry, because Booga got it figured out. Finally, remember what I said about being the aggressor in your fights. Yep, Booga was first to get the jump on his opponent. When Booga jumps on the opponent, he unfortunately doesn't get any shots off, but instead, you know, he builds above and he looks for shots. Realizing his opponent has a tactical shotgun, he has to figure something out, and he has to do it fast. The opponent manages to take his roof, but instead of just cowering down below and just taking the shots, Booga decides to play aggressive and W key with his SMG, knowing his full auto weapon mix with his 200 health is gonna get the job done. And he got it right. Using his SMG, he manages to pick up an easy kill and some solo loot from his opponent. From this clip, we can see that Booga following the three rules of having a consistent loot route, grabbing a lot of materials, and playing aggressive on his opponent, Booga is now free to roam around, grab more loot and materials, and play out the rest of his game knowing that his first opponent got absolutely destroyed. Alright, so we've gone over quite a lot in this video, so let's do a quick recap. First, grabbing materials in early game is absolutely crucial due to the fact that most early game fights are going to come down to just that, whoever can outbuild and get better angles. 
Second, having a consistent drop spot and loot path is gonna benefit you guys heavily through better and more consistent loot, more materials, and better knowledge of your spot. Third, being the aggressor in your early game fights is very, very important as getting early tags and surprising your opponent will both benefit you guys a whole lot and increase your chance of survival. You know, from Mongo's VOD analysis, you know, we can see the importance of knowing when to disengage in early game, knowing when to open your glider, farming materials before your fights, and keeping an eye on the storm so it doesn't creep on you and just ruin your game. From Buga's analysis, we can see three rules come into play here. Having a consistent loot path, all right? Collecting a lot of materials and playing aggressive on your opponent. All right, guys, once again, it is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only, come on, say it with me, Keith Allen. Hope you enjoyed this video today. I really, really do. Connect with me on my new Insta. Not on my old one, on my new one, if you want to hear from me, all right? And once again, keep it up, guys. Keep playing. Don't surrender. Don't quit. That's going to be it for today's video. Go into your next early game confident, knowing that you got a good strategy and you can come out of your fights with good loot, materials, and a good path to end game. We really hope you enjoyed this one, guys. Don't forget to use code PROGUYS in the Fortnite item shop when you make any sort of purchases. It just really helps us out, and we really, really do appreciate it. Comment down below what you thought about this video and what you'd like to see next on the channel. We aim to bring you guys the best daily Fortnite content, so do us a favor by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and show ProGuys.com some love for bringing you this video. Thanks for watching.